Ahoy there, Meeple Town! Today we are looking at Forgotten Waters, where we are going to take on crew members of a pirate ship, following the captain's orders and trying to complete the objective. So today is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to do a playthrough or even playing through a round. I'm just going to show you what some of the game offers so that I'm not spoiling anything for you. Let's get to the table and check out Forgotten Waters. Okay, so here is the setup. Uh, it's got everything as tight as I possibly could in here. I know there's a, a lot here, but I wanted to make sure that I at least kind of give an overview of, of everything that's out here. Um, so we've got the main board here where we're going to be doing our actions. The book, which is going to be where we are taking our actions. We're going to be flipping through the, those two um, as we travel and go to different locations. Um, everyone is going to take on a different role. I'll explain those in just a minute. Uh, but also every character, you're gonna have a scribe. This is the uh, a game I was, a solo game I was playing through. This is the uh, the Pride of Meeple Town is the name of the ship. You just come up with the uh, name of the ship and then the scenario that you're playing. Um, and then uh, different notes that you're gonna be taking throughout the scenario, which is why I just showed you one that had um, not really a spoiler because I've just kind of started that one. <coughs> as a, as a uh, newer solo setup. Um, also, each player is going to be, uh, is going to have this, um, uh, this character sheet. I just took the a blank one again, so I'm not um, uh, giving any spoilers in the game. Um, I just took a blank one out of here, but this is going to be, you're going to put your name at the top, and the book suggests you can either come up with your own name or you can roll two dice, and when you roll those two dice, multiply them together, and that will give you the first and then your last name. Um, so you might have something like Creepy McGee or, or Jojo Murder Bones or something like that. Um, those are ac actual names that I've used in, in games. Um, <clears throat> then you're going to be filling out this constellation on here, which is a big part of the game, um, to, to show how you're going to win. Um, you're gonna if you can get through the scenario get through the objectives that you need to get through and finish that completely if you've completed four constellations then you will be the winner and if you complete five you will have a, a legendary victory uh, for those who have completed those um, constellations and this is where you're going to be filling in your different stats um, you're going to be coloring in these the squares and as you get to the stars you're going to be filling in those constellations but these will also help you for your um, uh, for your uh, uh, your roles that you're going to have to do, and I'll explain that in just a little bit too. And then there's some Mad Lib stuff going on there on the inside, which is also very important because it plays a key part, but again, I won't show off any of that. Okay, so everyone's going to take on a different role, and I'll kind of go through what these are. You've got the, the first mate, and the first mate is going to be moving the discontent marker up, and the crew or, or down, um, and, and the crew marker up or down, depending on your scenario. So in this initial scenario, you start off with nine crew and it costs five uh, of the resources to be able to feed your crew whenever you have to do that. If, <clears throat> if these two markers ever meet or exceed each other, um, that is going to mean the crew will lose the game because you don't want to have your crew too discontent, they that will cause a mutiny, which is what would happen in that loss scenario. Next, we've got the boatswain, who is going to be keeping up with the hull track. If this hull track ever reaches zero, everyone's going to drown, and that will also equal a loss. Uh, then you have the cooper. He's going to keep up with the supply track. Again, this is used for different things, but um, also very important for feeding your crew, um, like I mentioned earlier. The lookout is going to be keeping up with the objective, and sometimes you will have uh, situations where you will have threat events to happen. So this one, a threat event will happen if you get two of these tokens out there, and then when that happens, you're gonna cross off that that uh, part on, the ship scribe's gonna cross that off on their sheet, and then they will have to uh, read that scenario, which the app will do that for you. Um, and then your quartermaster is going to keep up with the infamy track, and this is going to determine player order. Uh, but it's also going to be—it's going to be very important for when you're placing out your workers out on the board. That I'll explain that in just a minute. Um, but it also will—it's um, uh, it, helpful. It's helpful to to have the highest uh, amount of infamy there. Uh, but you'll be able to take actions that will allow you to move um, up on this track. But as you move up, you'll be pushing others down 
on this track. All right, now over to the gunner. The gunner is going to be keeping up with your cannons. Uh, in this scenario, this is a setup for you. You might not be able to see that, but I've got one loaded level one cannon and then one unloaded level one cannon that you'll use to imagine that you will use that to battle. Um, okay, so how a round goes is everyone is going to have standees for their players. And in this case, we've got the purple, red, blue, and yellow characters. And to start the round, you'll set a timer, and that timer is going to be a 40 second timer. And for that, you're going to place your standees out in these worker placement spots. Now, some of them are gonna be blue like this, and that means only one person can be there. The green ones mean you can have multiple people there. Some of them will have red spots, meaning that you have to complete those, um, those actions that you're going to take. Um, like sailing, feeding your crew, things like that. Um, and when the timer starts, you're gonna go in infamy order. And if you get to the end of the timer and you've not placed all of your workers, well, the crew's not going to be very happy and so discontent is going to rise. And you don't want that to happen. So you really want to be um, uh, quick about taking those actions. Now, the explanation of all those actions is going to be over on this side of the page. However, you're not gonna read those, or you're not supposed to read those, um, mainly because you won't have enough time, but also the rule book tells you not to. But just look at the title, and then um, these symbols will kind of give you an idea of what that's going to do. So we'll place all these out there. Let's say this is the, uh, this is the place that we've put them out onto the board. And then in not infamy order, but in player order, you're going to take your action. So for example, um, I will just take the, the blue player's action. And what this says is that you're going to uh, swagger, you're gonna move up one. So go back over to your sheet and you're gonna mark off one of the squares on swagger uh, and that will give you a bonus whenever you're rolling for that. And then you're gonna perform a swagger check. So I would take my die and roll it. I rolled a 10. Then what I would do is I would take that number and add it to however many squares I have filled in here. So in this example, I would have filled in the swagger square um, for this one because I just filled that in. Then if you have any cards, um, everyone's going to be starting off with these different um, uh, there are different treasure cards. If you have a treasure card that also adds swagger, you're gonna add that to your total. In this case, I don't have one, so I would add 10 plus one, it's gonna be 11. And then I would roll on, or look on here to see which action that I would take. So in this case, it says choose three market options below. And this is going to be giving you supplies for the crew, um, gathering news from the locals, which will give you reroll tokens and things like that. Um, a cool haircut, get a cannon, get something nice. So lots of different things that can happen in the explain to you everything that's going to go on there. So if I'm going to take the market action and I know that's going to be a, uh, a swagger roll and you can see by the symbol that is on there, you might send somebody there that is going to be higher in swagger to be able to get a better benefit there. I'm going to take my action and then go down all the way to the very end after everyone has taken their actions in order. Then this has a round end um, scenario and you will put that number into the app and the app will tell you what to do next. Um, now with exploration, you're going to be, um, if you set sail, for example, um, you will be flipping over these tiles. Now sometimes you'll be able to actually kind of scout your course to know where you're gonna be going, um, but these different tiles are gonna come out you go on there and depending on what what is going on in that tile you'll flip to that page in the book the app will show you where uh, where to go there um, flip to that page in the book and then you've got a new set of actions here um, but also a new story that comes up in the app and again you're going to be going um, in this scenario what i need to be able to do right now is to reach precipice island and this is not much of a spoiler because this is actually something you can see in the instruction book but i'm not going to give any more spoilers than that. that. That gives you a decent idea of how the game plays out. Um, now the scenarios, the stories are really going to vastly play out differently. One thing I didn't really mention is this is a crossroads game. And so there will be situations where um, something will, will trigger and a specific player will have to make a choice for maybe the rest of the crew or for themselves specifically, um, which is, <laughs> it becomes very interesting because, you know, you're a bunch of pirates trying to uh, coerce the player to do one specific thing, but that might not be what they want to do. And ultimately it's going to be their choice to be able to make that choice. And it's like the crossroads game, uh, like Dead of Winter, where you have to read the cards and it tells you, um, gives you different scenarios to do. So that's that's really interesting 
as well. Um, the components, let's get on to the art and components. That, that's a good idea for the, um, good enough for the gameplay, I think, to give you an idea of how the game plays out. Um, for the art and components, so this is everything here. There's a few more um, characters in the box and some more cards that I don't have out on the table. Um, and then I also didn't show the um, the app that you have. Um, now I've just got this uh, loaded up on my phone right now, but this is gonna give you your scenario setup. When you go to, um, uh, go to the gameplay, this will be where you're going to start your timer. Um, there we go, start your timer. You can look at your entry, your um, entry history. This shows you your setup. And then you, where you're gonna be typing in the numbers, you'll type them in here, hit YAR, and then the app will read that out for you. There's also, I don't have it on right now, but there's some, some music that plays in the background. So if you have a Bluetooth speaker or something like that, you can plug in and that will help you um, hear that better and also be able to hear the voices better. So onto the art and components. I, which I already, I guess with the app, I already kind of talked to us, let us into that. Um, but you've got the cards and you've got the tiles. I think everything is really well done. Now it's not, you know, you don't have miniatures. So if you don't, if you're not a tile person, um, excuse me, if you're not a um, uh, standy, a cardboard standy person, you might not like those. I think they're totally fine for this game. Um, I think I'm, I'm pleased. I'm very pleased with the art and components in this because uh, the book is, is pretty thick, a lot of different locations that you can go to, a lot of different tiles that you're gonna navigate, and all of that has to also be incorporated into the app, which I would imagine takes a lot of work, especially working with um, uh, you know different voice actors that they have in the game. So I think that's really well done. The cardboard um, is thick. It's nice. Um, I like the, uh, <laughs> let me show this, the pirate for the um, first mate, the crew token here has a, a, a mouth cut out of it. And that is so that you can see how much food it is going to go into the crew's mouth, which I think is really cool. Um, and then a big stack of cards and these tokens. So there's not a ton of components, but really when you factor in the storybook, when you factor in the app, that has the, the voice actors. I'm really, really pleased with the production of this. And the art, I just think is top notch. I really love the art, this, this fantastical art, uh, which fits in really well with the theme of this game. I, I like that quite a bit. But let's get on to gameplay. The gameplay is really fun, but I'm gonna say that with a caveat that I recognize that this game is not going to be for everybody. Um, if you follow Maple Town, you know that one of my favorite games of all time, uh, top 10 game for me is, is Mansions of Madness second edition. And I think if I'm, a, if I'm gonna compare this game to anything, that's probably the one that's gonna compare to the most. Obviously it's not that horror theme, it's that pirate theme, um, but the but the same it's kind of the same idea, right? You are going to be exploring this map and, and checking out different things, trying to complete the objectives. And your the app will, will do a lot of the um, storytelling for you in this game, <clears throat> just like in Mansions of Madness. Um, and then the gameplay itself, like the rules themselves, are are simple. The the rule book is not. It's not very big at all, right? Just the, the rule section really is only a couple of, of pages because the app does so much for you. And for me, <clears throat> that's a big positive, like a very big positive. I, I've enjoyed these app-based games that, that do the storytelling for you. I love the app for this game because it, it is reading the story to you um, and it, it just is very immersive. The the voice actors, I think, were, were picked really well and just did a great job with explaining the story and kind of walking you along. But at the same time, you still have some interesting decisions, right? You are going to be placing your crew member, <clears throat> your worker, onto the board and doing that action. And you're only going to be able to do that once per location that you're at, right? Or once per page that you're at. You can stay at the same location, but oftentimes that's not what you want to do depending on on what's going on. Um, but, but you're only going to be placing your worker one time and sometimes you have to do things, right? Sometimes you're going to have to uh, have somebody that's going to sail. You're going to have to have somebody that's going to feed the crew. And I think that's really interesting. And so what that means is that you want to be able to, to be higher up in your um, in the infamy track so you'll be able to take better actions because I mean, after all, you're still a pirate. You're still trying to look after yourself and do what's going to be the best thing for you. So 
for those reasons, and you know, because the the decisions are fun to do, um, if you like that sort of thing. Now, I will say, <clears throat> if you are super heavy Euro gamer, which there's nothing wrong with that, but if that is you through and through, and you really don't like these Amerithrash games that um, have luck involved with them, you know, with the with the dice rolling or not fully knowing the actions, what they're what's going to be involved when you take the actions, and not even having full control over what's gonna happen when you take those actions. So if those are things that really bother you, I don't think this game is gonna be for you. But for me, for somebody who absolutely loves uh, Mansions of Madness and, and just that, that being immersed into the theme and just having fun pretending to be this, this pirate and looking after yourself, but at the same time trying to do the things that are best for the crew, um, it really feels like this very immersive pirate experience, and that's exactly what I was looking for. So for me, uh, this game is, is going to get high marks. This is going to be a an 8.5 out of 10, and I'm only, I think probably eventually I'll go higher, but I need to dig more into this game. Uh, because of, of coronavirus, I haven't been able to get it to the table as much as I want to. The, the positive thing, I will say this, so I've played this solo and I've also played with a uh, with a bigger group to get the better experience. That's why it's taken me so long to get to this <clears throat> to get to this review. But the solo experience I think was a lot of fun. I don't think that's the way that it was intended. I know that's not the way it was intended. And I know that um, I know that that's not going to give you the full experience of the game. I'll say that. But I still think the solo was a lot of fun. I really think it was an enjoyable experience. Again, because you're still exploring. You're just having to take on other roles. Um, but it does shift how the game plays because there is uh, a decent amount of, of player interaction in this game as well. Um, so that higher player count is the better way to play for sure. Um, but I really love what... Um, what Plat Hat has done, because you can actually play with one person having the copy, you can play this online, and they have the resources that you need on their website to be able to do that. Uh, and and again, you'll you'll just have to have one copy of the game. It works better if you have people that have you know everyone that has a copy of the game, so that you can have all the pieces in front of you. But as it is, you can still just play with one copy and play with people remotely. And I think that was really cool because, again, I do think that that is the way that, that this game is intended to play. But all that to say, an eight and a half, but I could see it rising because I know that I'm going to get more plays of this in. And the more I play through these scenarios uh, that do change up because of the map and, and those tiles that are going to come out, um, I think that this probably could rise up for me, but I'm going to keep it in an eight and a half right now, which is a really fun game, one that I'm not going to turn to play down. And if I can find the right group, I will definitely play this more and more. So eight and a half for me on Forgotten Waters. Now, if you want to get in touch with, with us, you can reach us at meepletowngames.com. You can also reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. That's at Meepletown Games. Or you can go to our guild at Board Game Geek. That's guild number 3407. Till next time, thanks for coming down to Meepletown. Thanks for joining us. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meepletown Games and connect with us on the Meepletown Guild guild number 3407 at boardgamegeek.com and also subscribe to our podcast and youtube channel and until next time thanks for coming down to meeple town